r slash ask reddit. Negativison 9120 says. What is the most hurtful moment you witnessed? Bumbugioazy says. Two of my friends in college were high school sweethearts. Due to a freak heart malfunction, the guy suddenly died while we were sledding my sophomore year. The girl remained close with his family, still calling his parents mom and dad. Ten years later, she was finally getting married to a new guy, but invited her high school sweetheart's parents as they are still close. The parents sat in the back row, and the father shook with sobs as he watched the wedding, that should have been his son's. Disavelet Bone says. Oh god me eyes are wet now. Depechik 725 says. You got me with this one. No plenty 4152 says. A few years ago I took my dog to the vet for a routine checkup. We're in the waiting room waiting for my dog's number to be called when this big dude must have been 6 feet 7 and built like an NFL linebacker comes out from the back, head in hands, barely able to walk, being comforted by staff who are also getting emotional. He was holding his cat's collar sobbing like I've never seen anyone sob before, having just had to put his cat down. Made me tear up in the waiting room. That one always stuck with me. I will never forget the sight of that broken hearted man. I hope he's doing well. Govnutty Boggs says. I've been at the vet and seen people coming out of the room. Even when they're holding it together, you can see it all over their face. Big ol' burly rancher slash farmer guy coming out of the room and leaving the office without a critter, without stopping at the front desk, just straight out the door. Oof. We were there for a quick checkup, because our cat was having trouble peeing, turns out she's a drama queen, and just needs some goof and every once in a while, if she gets worked up. I seen that man, right before they took us into one of the examination rooms and I started crying. My girlfriend was confused, there's nothing wrong with our cat, she's gonna be fine. It was seeing that man, seeing that pain, knowing what he just had to do, because we'd been in the room too just a bit over a year earlier for our old cat. Sbgo says. This why I love my vet. They have a completely separate area with a separate entrance slash exit for people saying goodbye to pets. My wife and I recently put down a cat after only having it for 7 weeks, and it was hard. Being placed in a bigger room with comfy couches and chairs, going through all the paperwork and payment stuff, before putting him down. After we chose cremation and all that we paid, they sedated him a little bit, and put a catheter in his leg, and we got as much time as we needed to say goodbye. After a couple hours we pushed a little call button and they came back, and, well, they did what they did. The whole experience, as painful as it was, was beautifully done. In contrast, a few years earlier I had to put down a cat suddenly, and I had to go to the cashier, and pay and try to choose memorial options, while absolutely beside myself. There were people in the waiting room, and it was kind of embarrassing. That handle 518 says. Once, I witnessed a child trying to show their drawing to a parent, who barely glanced at it before dismissing it. The child's face fell, and you could see their disappointment and hurt. It was a brief moment, but it really highlighted how powerful our reactions can be, and how much they can affect someone's self-esteem. Pretty Little Biran says. I'm a pre-K teacher and I've witnessed this exact scenario play out a few times before. It always breaks my heart. Children shouldn't have to feel that kind of rejection by a loved one, it's cruel. That handle 518 says. I wish parents were more careful, but they are humans, not robots they make mistakes, as all of us. Morsemidcom001 says. I was in Paris and a guy asked his girlfriend to marry him. She didn't only say no, but she ran away, as if it was a movie. I don't know the backstory, and if we were actually being recorded, but damn that was pretty hurtful for the guy. ID Frame says. Marriage proposals should never come as a surprise. They should always be expected. 
Emo declarations of love should be seen coming as well, but I have had people disagree with good points. Tynor X says. The marriage proposal itself can be a surprise in how and when it's done, but you should know the answer well before you ever ask the question. With my wife for example, we looked at some rings, I got some insight into her preferences and she knew I was serious, but she had no idea when or where I bought the ring and had no idea when or how I was going to propose, just that it was likely happening soon after we looked. Big Inform says. When my dog died. I was a single guy, got him, right after moving out on my own. Had him for 13 years. He passed after meeting my wife and 4 months after my daughter was born. He was like my firstborn kid. R slash ask reddit. Miss Electra says. How do you set boundaries with family members who don't respect your personal space or decisions? Moncherry says. I'd just be direct but gentle. I tell them something like I really need my own space right now, or I get where you're coming from, but this is my choice to make. If they keep pushing, I will repeat myself and stay firm. It might feel uncomfortable at first, but standing up for what I need, even with family, is super important for my peace. SP013 says. And for my next trick, the art of vanishing. I just go Maya, and don't bother picking up their calls. Jmanpk says. You must remember, that the boundaries you set, are only behaviors, that you can control. You cannot force somebody else to abide by your rules. My mother-in-law has BPD, and in the wake of her husband passing, she became increasingly unhinged. It eventually got so bad, that she was berating and belittling my wife at every opportunity she got. She blamed my wife for everything wrong in her life, to her face. She even blamed my wife for her father's death. He died of brain cancer. Not the kind of thing you can conveniently blame somebody for. As she was becoming more and more unhinged, we tried setting boundaries on her. Don't blow up on me by text. If you are emotional, let's talk about it face to face, so that we can have more healthy interactions instead of losing context to unformatted text. She broke that one immediately. We asked her to stop love bombing our children, trying to buy their affection. The love bombing became... Less frequent but more intense. We asked her to give us notice, before she showed up at our house. She started being in the neighborhood, figured I might just stop by. All of the time. Trying to enforce boundaries on her only seemed to set a goalpost. She tried to break boundaries as frequently and flagrantly as possible. I say all that to say this. You cannot set boundaries on others. You can only set boundaries on yourself. Stop sending me emotional texts became I will not reply to emotional texts, you will not get any engagement. Stop love bombing my children became any gifts left on my porch will be immediately thrown away. Do not show up at my house without notice became if you show up at my house without warning, I will not open the door. You must set boundaries for yourself and communicate them with the person who you are setting those boundaries for. Put them in writing. Do not leave any room for excuses. Working at 8420 says. This one is fun for me. I recently turned 30, and it was like a switch turned on in my brain. I became no BS. You disrespect me. I'll let you know, no more holding back. You try to teach my kids something I told you not to. I'll rip you apart, and you'll stop seeing them, until I say so. I set a boundary. Frick I'm try me and cross it. My family, mom, and brother, say I've changed. I say I've just stopped accepting the way they treat me. Truly life is too short to people, please all the time. Palmsapu says. No is a complete sentence. I don't need to explain my decisions, all the time. Smartfella for Thela says. Firm verbal communication. If that doesn't do the trick, then getting another family's input might work. 
Vera Loxaban says. One time a few days before Christmas my family and I were getting ready to go on a family vacation to France. All my cousins and my aunt and my cranky cheap uncle were staying the night to go with us the next morning. My parents ordered pizza for everyone. I remember it was pretty expensive even for over 30 years ago, $120, 10 pizzas times 12 bucks. Then my older brother ate all the plain cheese pizza. He knew it was my favorite, but he ate it anyway. Then he taunted me that I could have some if I just got a plate for him to throw up on. He was such a jerk. In the commotion, I ended up knocking over the milk onto the boarding passes and everyone freaked out. They all blamed me, even though it was my brother's fault. So I got sent to the third floor to sleep by myself. I was so mad at my mom. I told her everyone in the family hated me. She told me that maybe I should ask Santa for a new family, and I said families suck and I didn't want any family. And the craziest thing happened, the next morning they were all gone. I'd made them disappear, so I guess I set boundaries with my family by making them disappear with my devil magic. Miawapalish says. I set a hard boundary of never talking to them. If they can't respect my simple request to call me by my name and not their stupid nickname, then they don't respect me at all, and why would I spend time around people who don't respect me and have a history of benefiting from manipulating me? That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.